tape recording is the interview uh, being um, given by Ed Stokes to Brenda Hepler. Uh, the date is January, January 26th, 2007. The uh, interview is taking place at his office at the Diablo Foods grocery store. Uh, testing. testing one, two, three. Again. Testing one, two, right. three. Okay, Ed. Um, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, my original home is. Uh, I was born in Florence, South Carolina, but after I was one month old, we moved to Asheville, North Carolina, up in the mountains, because my father was gassed and wounded in the first war. And they felt the uh, the the, uh, the mountainous air would be better for them there than down in, in South Carolina. So I was raised in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, I graduated school there, and uh, in 1940. And uh, as, as, uh, after after the uh, after 1940, I went in the Marine Corps, and uh, the war was started in 41, as you know. And uh, I went in the uh, United States Marine Corps, and uh, I served overseas. And uh, where? Uh, in the Pacific. In the Pacific. All in the Pacific. And uh, I don't want to go too much about the Marines, but uh, uh, that was that was a, a a big a big part of my life that you just can't forget, you know. But you do. Uh, so then after. The Marine Corps, I came out and I had a chance for the first time to go on the GI Bill of Rights because uh, we couldn't afford it back there. It's a very poor uh, background that I have because uh, it was a depression. Uh, I was born in 22, the big depression was in 30. And uh, I was selling papers on the streets and uh, selling Liberty magazines in uh, Saturday Evening Post to try to, to, to make, make a few pennies. And I'd sell papers on the street. My mother would say, um, uh, when I got home at night, how many papers did you sell? I said, uh, I sold uh, five. And I got two cents of profit. I had to pay three cents. I got two cents profit. So she'd say, you made a dime. Well, give me the dime. Because my father was always in the hospital. In those days, it might be interesting to know that uh, uh, you could buy uh, three pound of pinto beans for a dime. You buy two loaves of... Uh, uh, day old bread for a nickel, and you can buy a 50 cents, you can buy 100 pound potatoes. So that's what we ate beans, potatoes, and bread. And that's what we ate, but that's that was good. But that was uh, my background there. But uh, then after I got this skip again, so we went to the we, we got out of the Marine Corps and I went to college in Mars Hill College. It's a it's a, a college, a nice, it's, it's second highest academically rated college in the uh, United States. Pasadena is number one. But I finished there with good grades. I enjoyed it very much. But then I decided to go into the uh, feed and seed business. I went in four years. I, and this is in North Carolina? Yeah, North, North Carolina. Carolina. And I um, I was there, for, but I didn't like it too much. And uh, and Betty and I were married in 48, by the way, and I, as soon as I graduated school. And uh, we had uh, two children, both Connie and Daniel. Uh, Dan uh, were born in Asheville too, and uh, and uh, they have a kind of, they don't have a southern accent like I do, but they do. But anyhow, what happens is that uh, I wasn't happy there, and Betty had an uncle that owned a construction company here in the Bay Area, and he wanted me to come out and go to work for him. So I did, and, uh, and it wasn't a heck of a lot I could do because I wouldn't, everything's union out here. So I had to work the uh, labor crews. <laughs> and so I rode wheelbarrows and all that. But I didn't, uh, of course I didn't like that, but uh, it was a nice experience building bridges. We built all the bridges between Castro Valley and uh, and San Lorenzo, all going across through there. <clears throat> so I was lucky enough to be accepted in the University of California, Berkeley. I didn't think I'd make it because in those days you had to have a B average and I didn't think I had that in my freshman sophomore year. But ex believe it or not, they accepted me. And uh, so 
uh, I came home and told Betty we were accepted in, the, in, in, in Cal, in Berkeley. She said, well, how are we going to live? <laughs> I said, well, I won't have to go to work. So I went to a, <clears throat> I went to a, 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 a supermarket at, on University and Grove in Berkeley. You may know it. It's about three blocks down from the main part of the campus down University Avenue. And it was a supermarket, one of the biggest supermarkets. I asked the guy for a job. It was September. He said, I don't need anybody now. Uh, this is uh, September. All the vacations are over. I, don't, I just don't have anything for you. So the n next day, I went back and I asked him again. I said, hey, how long want a job? He said, you were just here. And I said, yeah, I know, but I still don't have a job. So I went back there the third day, and I told the guy, I said, pick out any two people in this store, your best people, and I'll outwork them, and you won't be sorry. And he threw an apron at me and said, prove it. So that's how I got into grocery business out here in California. I, uh, and when I finished Cal, I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, he asked me to stay and manage his store, and I did. And then I become his he had seven stores, and then I became. What was the name of the store? You Save Centers. Uh -huh. And uh, he had seven stores, and then later I became the general manager of the stores, and I liked it. But, mm -hmm. but my boss, You Save Centers, sold out to a people called Lee Brothers, mm -hmm. and Lee Brothers had sixty some stores, so they wanted me to stay with them, and I ran twenty one stores for them. In, the, in this area, mostly, uh, and uh, that was uh, uh, unfortunately a, a bad move because they went bankrupt. The grocery business is tough. Everybody is going bankrupt. If I knew, t could tell you how many stores there were uh, then and now, it'd be shocking. I'm talking about independent stores. But anyhow, this store here we're in right now, Dabble Foods. I helped build this store. I helped set it up, set the store up, as because this was, no, as a you save. Oh, okay. And you save, I, I was running, like I was saying, seven stores, and so. And what year was this? Uh, 65. Okay. Uh -huh. 65, and um, this is one of the stores, so when, when, when Lee Brothers went bankrupt, they closed this store. So I had the chance, but got a few leases. So I went to Mr. Percy Whitten here in town. He was, uh, he owned this building, this lot. And he said, I'm not gonna say you rent this store to you because the big guys fail. How, what makes you think you can? So I went to his house every night after, <laughs> after school. I kept knocking on his door and said, I still wanna rent that store. And he said, okay, how much money you got? I said, I don't have any money. He says, how are you gonna do it? I said, well, I'll go out and buy it. I'll, I'll get it. So he finally, after all that persistence, he uh, he said, "Yes, I'll, I'll issue that store. How much are you going to pay me?" I said, "I don't have any money." So I'm got a deal with him that he would uh, two percent of everything I took out was rent. So that was real good because if we weren't doing much volume, you didn't have to put much rent. And if you had big high payments for a, for a lease. It'd be terrible, but he was good enough to me to give me, uh, so I paid him 2%, and uh, and uh, that's the story how we got started in 1968. I had a partner named uh, Sal Vallelunga. Uh, I had to go out and get a partner because I wanted the best meat department in all the land, and uh, his name was Sal Vallelunga. I don't know if you know him or not, but he uh, lived in Lafayette, and uh, he was a good meat man. And uh, he worked for Usage with us, and then he went to a parking shop, which is the Ronico's today he worked. But anyhow, uh, he said, I'm not going to come to work for you to run that meat market. Uh, I will if you'll give me half interest in it. I said, okay, you're going to have to take half the liability. So believe it or not, that's how we started. And he opened the meat department, and we want to be unique and have the best market around. So. Uh, we uh, we decided to go butcher behind the counter, old-fashioned butcher shop, uh, featuring uh, uh, USD prime and choice meats, and, uh, and and the best fish. We bought both the very best fish and the best uh, chickens that you could possibly buy, and we still do. Uh, we don't buy for price; we buy for quality. 
Uh, so, anyhow, we opened the store, and uh, I think I checked, I got in the store, I checked the groceries, when we opened from 9 in the morning until 9 at night, I was in the check stand. If I had to go eat or something, Betty would bring me something in the check stand. But that's how we started real hard. But today, when you look back on it, you think, golly, that is, they got a successful store. But it's been a rocky, rocky road. I'll just tell you a few of the bad things that happened. Six, uh, six years after we went in partnerships, he went to the John Muir Hospital to get a simple uh, gallbladder operation. He never came out. So there I was, I didn't have much money then, and we were just struggling. So I had to pay her half interest in the store, the widow. So I had to do that. and. Uh, and uh, which was real bad, but I was paying her off. And uh, about a year later, this store burned to the ground. Burned to the ground. There wasn't anything here but ashes. Remember that, Barbara? And uh, it was terrible. Everything was gone. And uh, so uh, I had deaths, and then I had uh, uh, fires. I've had earthquakes. I've had floods. <laughs> A lot of things have happened, so it hadn't been an easy road. But it's been it's been exciting, and and uh, and we've enjoyed the ride. So that brings us where to uh, to. Um, I don't want to talk too much about the past, but uh, that brings us then. Okay, can we just bring, just talk. All right, then let's close this for a moment. Okay, okay, because okay. that is wonderful to hear. I now, what did you when you? came to work here, mm -hmm. I mean, and you started your store. Mm -hmm. What do you think you brought with you to, to work so hard and to keep going? What do you think from your growing up yes. in Asheville, North Carolina? What were yeah. some of the things from Asheville that you brought yeah. to this store? Well, think? I think mostly uh, hard work. And uh, it's been said that uh, uh, Luck is a four-letter word, a W-R-K, and I think that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. But we worked hard, and uh, we insisted on quality, and uh, and uh, that's how we got started. Okay, great. Um, what um, awareness of community did you get from living in Asheville and growing up? Well, a sense of community. It was. Growing up in Asheville was very difficult. Like I was saying, I sold papers on the streets and later on uh, had a paper out. And uh, and I learned the worth ethics that you have to, there's no free lunch. When we were when we were young, like I was telling you, my father uh, was a barber and he didn't, um, in those days, the first thing uh, a mother did was buy some clippers at the tennis store and they cut all the hair of their the wife did of the husband of the kids, so it's very tough. So uh, um, growing up, I, I respected him, I loved him, my father and mother, but he especially, because he was sick, he'd go to the barber shop and stand there all day long, like I was saying, because he didn't have much business. And at night he got a little, a little uh, doctor bag and he put his barber tubes in it and he'd go to hospitals. And he'd go around for people that couldn't, haven't been out of the hospital, and he'd shave them and give them haircuts. And we, that helped a lot too, you know. So that, anyhow, uh, I admire my father a lot because he was a hardworking guy and he never gave up. But he died at 61 too early, too early. Uh, Did he get paid for going to the hospitals, or was? Oh that, yeah, they paid him. Yeah. yeah, but he just yeah. went out into the community. Yeah, and yeah, did right. What he had to do. And finally, the biggest hospital, they gave him a little room. <laughs> He'd come down in that, and that it was really nice. Oh, okay. Um, I, how have you developed a store like Diablo Foods in Lafayette? And it, this kind of goes together. And how yeah. do you think it's different from other grocery stores in yeah. towns this size? Uh, Again, if uh, two words, quality and service. Quality, you have to have quality. And, 
and service you got to give the lady, uh, ladies and customers. Uh, uh, they don't want to wait at the sex stand. They don't want to wait in the meat market. We wait, wait on our labor costs are a little bit higher, but we give service, service, service. And, um, and of course, I think the quality. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just really uh, great. I'm so grateful to, to be here, you know, and, and be have the success we did right now, what we have done. And um, I think that's... Uh, Right, but then why do you think it's more than just a grocery store? In other words, you have quality, you have service, yeah. but there's something else. Yeah, well, we... Why do you think that something else is? Friendly, friendly, hometown people, and we uh, we have the best customers in all the world here, and we want to treat them with respect and dignity, and we do that. It's the friendly stores. People cop in our stores, they come in now, and the aisles are always jammed up. With their, they're talking to their neighbors and their friends because this is a place to come meet, and uh, it's been a, it's been, it's just been an exciting uh, time being here and seeing that. Mm -hmm. Could I ask my question? Uh -huh. I talked to Judy Brown today, and I told her what I was going to do, and she said, "You know, that man is incredible. I never once went in and asked him for something for a community project that he didn't give me what I needed." Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and and that's an amazing quality. That's wonderful. Um, do you think that came from Dad and and the past, or where did that come? From? Well, <clears throat> when you're as poor as we were in those days, you always say, "If I ever see a paper boy in the street, I'm going to give him a buck, and I'm going to give to the community, and I'm going to uh, uh, I'm all never be selfish, but be a giving person." And I do that. I help all the schools and the churches and all the uh, civic organizations. And uh, anybody comes around, I, I, don't, I can't give them all a real lot, but I do help everybody a little bit. And I think uh, I think that helped help the story too. Our reputation is good for that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I looking at the goals of the community as a place of welcoming, you know. This mm -hmm. is, um, Mutual support, which you were talking about, people you always give respect to the customer, the mm -hmm. customer service, um, our values, and um, and addressing our needs, as you say, with quality. How do you see? Well, you've, I think you've said it in some ways. You're meeting these needs. I mean, you've said it. You feel that the store meets. Really, mm -hmm. all those needs. I think. I think so. Yeah. I, and I think you've. We've said tried it. to stress on uh, five things. Uh, uh, to uh, first is uh, quality. Second is service. Service. Third is a selection of merchandise. We have the biggest selection of. If you if you, if you ever notice that, of all the items, the oils and vinegar, the mustards are in it. We got a. We have a selection of merchandise and uh, clean stores. And the last, but competitive prices. And we, our prices, people think we're expensive because we're independent. We are not. Our meats are a little bit more higher because they are choice and prime. But uh, our vegetables and our groceries are right in the ball game with all our competition. Mm -hmm. um, there's just something else here, and I don't quite know, you know, because I'm kind of having a hard time putting mm -hmm. my finger on it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Friendliness, and I don't want to use another store's name, but let's no. just say a regular store. People yeah. say hello and goodbye, and can I help you? Yeah. But there's something different here. Yes. Uh, at one time, that competitor you talked about put uh, their uh, bulletin on the bulletin board. You have to say hello. You have to be. You have to be. Uh, yeah. Why is everybody in here? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I may be repetitious, but what I was explaining to you is that they, uh, competitors, put signs on the bull, you got to say hello. You gotta, and they say it as an order, not any warmth and loving uh, feeling that they get from our store. Uh, we've had uh, the best checkers in the world here, and they come and go. And uh, uh, we had one checker that had a, 
when she lived, uh, Rick Cronk at Dryer's Ice Cream gave her a big party up there in his backyard. Were you there? And uh, that's what the customers feel about us. And we're just together with them. And uh, it was really nice. Yeah, that, it was amazing. All right, now, um, what kind of stories do you have to tell? Anything that are humorous or particularly poignant, you know, or the, in the daily grind? Any funny stories? No. Because I hear you're a great storyteller. Well, uh, One story? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I don't know. Well, one story that I liked, I just heard, that the, the guy went to the doctor, and uh, he was kind of old. He went to the doctor and says, my right knee is killing me. i got a, a real bad knee. And uh, the doctor says, oh, it's just old age. And he said, what do you mean old age? My left knee doesn't hurt, and it's the same age as my right knee. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how appropriate that is. My yeah. husband, it was dead to the doctor for his right knee. <laughs> really? Well, my wife's to the left knee. Do you go to, who, who do you go to? Uh, uh, is Marson, this on? Do you know Dr. Merson? He's out in Congress. Oh, no, I don't have <laughs> Okay, so, uh, but now... Any stories like, yes, the party for Elsie, uh, um, that was amazing. Wasn't it? Um, and Gabe. Gabe, oh yeah, yeah I remember sure. Gabe. We gave parties for him when he retired and parties for a, a lot of the people, uh, the management that's gone. And uh, we've had fun. It's just a, it's just a Dabble Foods family. It's not a bunch of guys working. Uh, we're close and we uh, respect everybody. And I pay uh, everyone in the store 85 and 65 cents an hour higher than our competitors pay. Higher. So uh, I don't think they're. I don't think there's their uh, uh, the service is better because of that. I just think they're genuinely feed it. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Now, just um, on the looking at you know the idea of library. Mm-hmm. Did they have a library in Asheville, North Carolina? Uh, Asheville? I don't think so. No, I don't even think that. We had one in our sc school, uh -huh. in our high school, but uh -huh. we didn't have a library. Yeah. And um, how do you feel a library serves a community? Just oh. That, that's the value of a library well, in a community. Well, when you say community, I think of Lafayette. Right. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Right. Uh, Lafayette has the... Uh, as you know, the best schools in the area. I mean, we are always way up there. And we can continue to get b bigger and better because of our library coming in. And uh, uh, I think our whole economy, believe it or not, is, is felt because of this library and our schools. Because your home is worth more than anybody else just because of one thing, schools and library, the people here have elevated themselves up to the best. And uh, that's why uh, it helps business to have a library. It helps business to, uh, to, uh, to have good schools. Uh -huh. yeah. That's an interesting way of putting it. I never thought about it that way. Because that is, oh, I, yeah. my parents in the, you know, moved here in their 50s because of the schools. And that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. But I, you always think of the back. But I didn't think about the effect on business and business. Yeah, everything works together there. I mean, uh, and we've been very, is this on? And we've been very uh, uh, community minded in Diablo Foods. My daughter uh, was a, uh, real strong in LESF. I don't know, she's a president, but she was a president of PTA. And my, and my son in law, they were running all the parks and recreationals here. In fact, they were the first man and woman to ever be chosen citizen of the year. And that was several years ago, you remember that? And, uh, and we're proud of that because she, uh, she really has helped. She's really helped because she's gone out in the community and met people and the schools. And we got young people shop here. Yeah, Connie. Now, we get, we get as many young people today as we do old people. Because people, when they come in, if they just get exposed to us, they'll come back. And what other uh, community organizations have you been part of? Uh, I have been one of the board of directors of the uh, Lafayette, uh, I mean, of the uh, State Growth Association. I've been on the board desk for that for years. 
uh, I'm, I uh, was the president of the Chamber of Commerce. I was president of the Chamber in 1972. I was the president of the Rotary Club in 1984. Uh, I was president of the Lafayette Town Hall Theater, for, and I'm still real active in that. And um, I'm on the board of directors for the Lafayette Senior Housing. That's a Chateau Lafayette, you know. I've been there for years and years on that. And um, not many people know this, but I was elected to, to go into the Grocery Hall of Fame. Oh my goodness, yeah. well, congratulations, yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, that, this right here, ah. uh, that, wow. uh, that, that's quite an honor because all of the, in Northern, uh, I think mostly of California, were chosen and I'm the only one that's ever been chosen just for a little company like we do and it's, it's kind of an honor. I, I was going in with the Hall of Fame with another buddy of mine, Bob, Bob Piccinini, and Bob Piccinini uh, uh, had 120 stores, and now he's bought all the Iverson stores. He's going to have 240 stores, oh but he's a good buddy of mine. But here yeah. I went in the same time he did, and here I am uh, uh, just a little guy. Uh, then I'm also the honorary mayor of Lafayette. Did you know that? The honorary, oh, the honorary mayor? mayor? Honorary mayor of Lafayette. Oh. Yeah, there's a, there it is, uh, uh, here. Pull up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I won't get that. Video's up there, I'll show you later. We're never going to be able to tie you up, are we? <laughs> uh, no. We're so happy to have you here. We're never going to be able to tie you up, are we? But anyhow, yeah. uh, I was the honorary mayor. I have been chosen the business person of the year. I've been chosen the uh, citizen of the year. And the business person. So I've had every kind of honor that uh, they could possibly honor me, you know. And only because of this, I was out in the community, and they, the Lafayette Library is such a big part of the community. That's what makes it all worthwhile, you know. I was active uh, and I wrote a lot of letters trying to get people to, uh, to, to contribute to the library and a lot of my friends. Uh, in fact, Ann Groden's a real good friend of mine. She's running the thing, yeah, kind of yeah. like, kind of like, and um, and um, Bill Ames next door was a big contributor. Rick Cronk, we mentioned a minute ago, uh, former president Dryer's Ice Cream, and uh, uh, there's another guy that I thought of. Uh, uh, It doesn't matter. I, I lost it. That's yeah. okay. But a lot of people I've known, and I've helped uh, uh, with uh, letters saying you should, you know, in the paper and all that they've asked me to do. And uh, I think I helped. I hope I helped a little bit. Yeah, you know? I'm sure you have. And uh, I contributed too personally, and uh, and uh, so we're we're excited about it. Now, can I just ask you? You refer a lot of this back to the business, but. I, I guess from my experience, I get this feeling it isn't just for the business. Well, that's true. That's, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So uh, what, in, what in you, do you think, deep down, has made you, or in, let's see, what down deep down in you personally has given you the initiative and the, um, um, desire mm -hmm. to go out into the community. Yeah. What do you think? Well, number one, I think this is, a, I'm so proud and happy and privileged to live in a city like this. I love it so much. And uh, when we first came here, uh, they didn't, uh, uh, they didn't have a, a Highway 24. They had right down through, and, uh, but that's how long it's been. Rick's and driving. Yes, yeah, driving. sure. Now, don't tell me, Barbara, you're this old. Though. Yeah, she is. But, uh, She's uh, actually two years older than I am. Oh, yeah. I am not. I'm 18 months. Oh, old. yeah. <laughs> so, let's uh, get this right. Anyhow, I was going to say that uh, it's, it's a beautiful city, and I love it so much, and it's not work for me to come to work. I'm 84 years old and still enjoy coming to work. 
and uh, where most people have retired. But I kid people, I said, well, what, they asked me, why haven't you retired yet? I said, well, my creditors won't let me retire, you know. But um, uh, anyhow, that's, anyhow, the schools are so important to all of these things, this lovely city we have. We got the best schools, and now we got, I made a note here, uh, yeah. the, the library will enrich our uh, community. Uh, Lafayette schools have maintained a level of excellence. Young families are, are, are moving here for the schools alone. And of course the library is even gonna help them get, get more of uh, students. Uh, I think the library is icing on the cake. It just makes everything blend in because not only now we have everything in Lafayette that's important. We have the arts and uh, and the schools and the community churches, and now we got we got to have a library that's going to be top notch. Uh, I'm excited because my five, uh, four year old granddaughter uh, is going to be going to this library. And uh, we're excited about that. Can you believe that? Uh, uh, I think because of the library, teachers will encourage students to check out a book and have a book in their hand that's, t that's solid and tangible. And, uh, and they can go get a book and then return it and, uh, and keep the library going. Ann Grodin told me that, that right now today there's 700 uh, people that come in the uh, library each day each day this is the, light, the current library yes oh, so you can imagine what it's going to do when all the other beautiful things we've got come in uh, like I say well that's uh, if you were going to give advice to the community what advice for the future of the community What advice got to give the community? Uh -huh. Oh, great, that's, wise one. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, that's true. I, that's and, true. As far as growth and, and obviously the library, you agree, is the right step. Yeah. What additional things do you see as a possibility? Um, additional, other additional a way this community can grow. And, and if you were going to give advice to the people, the movers and shakers who are the young movers and shakers who are coming along, what advice would you? I would advise them to uh, to get involved, get with the community, get with the service clubs and uh, schools, and when they when they become involved, they uh, they're part of it. And I think that that's going to be the success of the uh, of this town. It's continuing success as people uh, stepping up to the plate. Um, I when I opened this <clears throat> opened the store in 1968. Year we, uh, the year that we uh, became a city, the same year, and uh, I've seen all the mayors in Walnut Creek. I mean, uh, uh, the mayors and the uh, uh, <coughs> super uh, uh, board of directors and uh, everything come through the, for a long time, and it's real strange that uh, that uh, every one of them felt the same way exactly. as what you're saying. They love the city and they want to do it correctly rather than selfishly. A lot of people give of time and money because they're selfish enough to want to do it for themselves rather than for the community and that, that's not what it is in this town. As you can know how much we raise. Somebody said uh, <clears throat> over 30, if somebody would told me you got to raise 13 million dollars in this town. 13 million my first my first thought was, golly, that's going to be tough. How are we going to get that much money out of this little town, you know? Because we're not wealthy. We don't have, uh, 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 they're well-to-do people here, but they're not wealthy. And, and But golly, we did it. And I'm so proud of the citizens of Lafayette for coming through like that. Oh, it's, that's uh, a wonderful it, it is, it is. Uh, people are giving here. Yeah. I was, when I was uh, the, uh, uh, president of the Rotary Club, our uh, national uh, club, Rotary Club, we had a uh, immune all the the children for um, 
for polio. And my, our, they said, your quota is $50,000 for our little teeny club. I said, $50,000? We can never get $50,000. We raised $70,000. But it just takes uh, people that are willing to help and willing to work to make this thing happen. Uh, there's no free lunch. You got to get out and, 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 and contribute to the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't sit back and let everybody else do it. I have an off the wall question. All Wasn't right. Super Saver here originally. No. Yeah. Are we going to? Let's saver? just finish. Okay. Oh, no, that's uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. This is the end of our official okay. interview. Okay. Okay. I ask silly questions. Yeah. Story addendum. Yes. Uh, okay, so a terrible setback occurred on May the 9th, 1978. Uh, 76. 76. Right. And, uh, and we were devastated, of course. And it was completely wiped out. Everything was gone. Yeah, because the fire. The fire. Yeah. The fire started then. And uh, I got on the phone and called all of my grocery managers all over the area and got everybody a job. And, uh, of course, we were devastated. We'd had no money hardly to keep going, but I did have a store in Concord at the time, and we put an ad in the paper. If you love Lafayette and if you love Diablo Foods, please shop at our Concord store. And uh, we put a map in so they could get there. It was a long way. And uh, we, we, our volume went up twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a week. Everybody we kept coming there. Isn't that something? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Amazing. Well, the other thing, since we closed our Concord store, uh, our business has jumped at least 10,000 people. Come from, they come from, Concord. come from Concord and Danville. I got people come from Danville oh, yeah. and Concord over here to shop that used to, that For was sure. acquainted with our store yeah. uh, over there. Uh, we sold uh, at uh, Christmas Eve one day of this last Christmas Eve, we sold three tons of crab. Three tons of crab. That's 6,000 pounds. We had eight guys cracking crabs night and day. People would give the order and we'd crack it for them and put it away. We couldn't crack it if they didn't order it. But can you believe that? Amazing. 6,000 pounds. You know what we didn't talk about is what about family taking over? Our, our oh yeah, family? oh yeah, oh yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, I, I think I'm going to outlive everybody, but <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, uh, my son that you just saw yeah. in me and my daughter Connie, uh, they own 24 and a half percent of the business now. I just wanted to keep, keep on at 51, but eventually. I'll step out completely. I'm trying to slow down a little bit now, but uh, in your dreams, yeah, in my dreams. But I, but it's not going to work. It's fun. It's the people. I miss the people. I want to go down there. I, with all these problems, I want to go downstairs and say hello to everybody. But uh, uh, what was? How that? are you good? This well, is a good question. I'm passing it down. But how, oh yeah, passing but it down. Pa the community. I don't know your son. I know Connie. Yeah. You know. And your adorable grandson. Yeah, yes, yeah. you know her too. No, him. Oh, him. Oh, Daniel. Him. Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. And um, the well, same sense, obviously, Connie has it, but the same sense of community. Yeah. How is that being passed Good down? Question. Well, how do you pass that? It's, it's hard. Well, like I was telling you, Connie was uh, very active mm -hmm. in the uh, the schools, the LMYA, the uh, the PTAs and uh, she's she's good. She was on the, she ran the Shop Lafayette uh, uh, for two or three years, yeah. the committee for the mm -hmm. chamber, and uh, she did a real good job. She is capable of uh, of keeping in the community, and so is my grandson. He just uh, my grandson, as you know, he's 25 years old. Here he is here graduating uh, St. Mary's College, and uh, he made all A's. He went to Wake Forest for two years, made all A's. He got homesick and wanted to come here, and he spent uh, the last two years, he graduated in St. Mary's with all these, and he had uh, a lot of people that wanted him to go to work for him, and guess what? He said, no, I, I want to come back and work in the grocery store. 
I said, boy, if that's the case, we're going to have to structure this thing so you're the third generation because um, uh, it has to be that way, and he's capable of doing that. Well, right, you have to meet his capability. Yeah. He can't be a straight A. But weren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Weren't you thrilled? Oh, I'm thrilled to death. He's thrilled. such I a mean, nice. Yeah, but I mean. Yeah, he's such a nice. Not only is my grandson, he's my buddy. We play golf together, and we go to St. Mary's basketball games together, and uh, and uh, he's a great guy. I love him. He's 25 years old now, though. Can you believe that? Okay. Yeah. So well, that's fabulous. Okay, that's our end of our addendum. As <laughs> wonderful as it was. Yes, I think that.